hurtfulness, because, to whatever extent there are beings, whether footless or with two feet, four feet, or many feet, whether having form or formless, whether perceptive or non-perceptive, or neither perceptive nor non-perceptive, the Tathagata, the Arahant, the perfectly enlightened one is declared foremost among them. So too, all beneficial qualities are rooted in alertfulness and converge upon alertfulness and alertfulness is declared foremost among them. Just as the footprints of all animals that roam on land fit into the footprint of the elephant. And the elephant's footprint is declared foremost. Among him, that is, with respect to size, so too, all beneficial qualities are rooted in alertfulness and converge upon alertfulness and alertfulness is declared foremost among them. Just as all the rafters of a peaked house lean toward the roof peak, slope toward the roof peak, converge upon the roof peak, and the roof peak is declared foremost among them, so too, all beneficial qualities are rooted in alertfulness and converge upon alertfulness and alertfulness is declared foremost among them. Just as, of all fragrant roots, black orris is declared foremost among them, so too. Just as, of all fragrant heartwoods, red sandalwood is declared foremost among them, so too. Just as, of all fragrant flowers, Jasmine is declared foremost among them, so too. Just as all petty princes are the vassals of a wheel-turning monarch, and the wheel-turning monarch is declared foremost among them, so too. Just as the radiance of all the stars does not amount to a sixteenth part of the radiance of the moon, and the radiance of the moon is declared foremost among them, so too. Just as, in the autumn, when the sky is clear and cloudless, the sun, ascending in the sky, dispels all darkness from space as it shines and beams and radiates, so too. Just as, whatever great rivers there are, that is, the Ganges, the Yamuna, the Asiravati, the Sarabhu, and the Mahi, all head toward the ocean, slant, slope, and incline toward the ocean and the ocean is declared foremost among him. So too, all beneficial qualities are rooted in alertfulness and converge upon alertfulness and alertfulness is declared foremost among them. Worthy of gifts. Because, these ten persons are worthy of gifts, worthy of hospitality, worthy of offerings, worthy of reverential salutation, an unsurpassed field of merit for the world. What ten? the Tathagata, the Arahant, the perfectly enlightened one, a Parchaka Buddha, the one liberated in both respects, the one liberated by Panna, the body witness, the one attained to view, the one liberated by faith, the Dharma follower, the faith follower, and the clan member. These ten persons are worthy of gifts, worthy of hospitality, worthy of offerings, worthy of reverential salutation, an unsurpassed field of merit for the world. Protector. Bikus, live under a protector, not without a protector. One without a protector lives in suffering. There are these ten qualities that serve as a protector. What ten? Here, a bhikkhu is virtuous. He dwells restrained by the patimoka, possessed of good conduct and resort, seeing danger in minute faults. Having undertaken the training rules, he trains in them. Since a bhikkhu is virtuous, trains in him, this is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu has learned much, remembers what he has learned, and accumulates what he has learned. Those teachings that are good in the beginning, good in the middle, and good in the end, with the right meaning and phrasing, which proclaim the perfectly complete and pure Brahmacharya. Such teachings as these he has learned much of, retained in mind, recited verbally, investigated mentally, and penetrated well by view. Since a bhikkhu has learned much, 
and penetrated well by view. This, too, is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu has good friends, good companions, good comrades. Since a bhikkhu has good friends, good companions, good comrades, this, too, is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu is easy to correct and possesses qualities that make him easy to correct. He is patient and receives instruction respectfully. Since a bhikkhu is easy to correct and receives instruction respectfully, this, too, is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu is skillful and diligent in attending to the diverse chores that are to be done for his fellow monks. He possesses sound judgment about them in order to carry out and arrange them properly. Since a bhikkhu is skillful and diligent, this, too, is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu loves the Dharma and is pleasing in iris assertions, filled with a lofty joy pertaining to the Dharma and discipline. Since a bhikkhu loves the Dharma, this, too, is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu has aroused energy for abandoning harmful qualities and acquiring beneficial qualities. He is strong, firm in exertion, not casting off the duty of cultivating beneficial qualities. Since a bhikkhu has aroused energy, not casting off the duty of cultivating beneficial qualities, this, too, is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu is content with any kind of robe, alms food, lodging, and medicines and provisions for the sick. Since a bhikkhu is content with any kind of provisions for the sick, this, too, is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu is mindful, possessing supreme mindfulness and alertness, one who remembers and recollects what was done and said long ago. Since a bhikkhu is mindful and recollects what was done and said long ago, this, too, is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu is wise. He possesses the panna that discerns arising and passing away, which is noble and penetrative and leads to the complete destruction of suffering. Since a bhikkhu is wise, this, too, is a quality that serves as a protector. Bhikkhus, live under a protector, not without a protector. One without a protector lives in suffering. These are the ten qualities that serve as a protector. Protector. Bhikkhus, live under a protector, not without a protector. One without a protector lives in suffering. There are these ten qualities that serve as a protector. What ten? Here, a bhikkhu is virtuous. He dwells restrained by the patimoka, possessed of good conduct and resort, seeing danger in minute faults. Having undertaken the training rules, he trains in them. Having considered, this bhikkhu is truly virtuous. Having undertaken the training rules, he trains in him. The elder bhikkhus, those of middle standing, and the junior bhikkhus think he should be corrected and instructed. Since they all have compassion for him, only growth in beneficial qualities and not decline is to be expected for him. This is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu has learned much, remembers what he has learned, and accumulates what he has learned. Those teachings that are good in the beginning, with the right meaning arid phrasing, which proclaim the perfectly complete and pure Brahmacharya. Such teachings as these he has learned much of, retained in mind, recited verbally, investigated mentally, and penetrated well by view. Having considered, this bhikkhu has truly learned much, and penetrated well by view, the elder bhikkhus, those of middle standing, and the junior bhikkhus think he should be corrected and instructed. Since they all have compassion for him, only growth in beneficial qualities and not decline is to be expected for him. This, too, 
is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu has good friends, good companions, good comrades. Having considered, this bhikkhu truly has good friends, good companions, good comrades, the elder bhikkhus, those of middle standing, and the junior bhikkhus think he should be corrected and instructed. Since they all have compassion for him, only growth in beneficial qualities and not decline is to be expected for him. This, too, is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu is easy to correct and possesses qualities that make him easy to correct. He is patient and receives instruction respectfully. Having considered, this bhikkhu is truly easy to correct and possesses qualities that make him easy to correct. He is patient and receives instruction respectfully. The elder bhikkhus, those of middle standing, and the junior bhikkhus think he should be corrected and instructed. Since they all have compassion for him, only growth in beneficial qualities and not decline is to be expected for him. This, too, is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu is skillful and diligent in attending to the diverse chores that are to be done for his fellow monks. He possesses sound judgment about them in order to carry out and arrange them properly. Having considered, this bhikkhu is truly skillful and diligent. In order to carry out and arrange them properly, the elder bhikkhus, those of middle standing, and the junior bhikkhus think he should be corrected and instructed. Since they all have compassion for him, only growth in beneficial qualities and not decline is to be expected for him. This, too, is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu loves the Dharma and is pleasing in his assertions, filled with a lofty joy pertaining to the Dharma and discipline. Having considered, this bhikkhu truly loves the Dharma and is pleasing in his assertions. Filled with a lofty joy pertaining to the Dharma and discipline, the elder bhikkhus, those of middle standing, and the junior bhikkhus think he should be corrected and instructed. Since they all have compassion for him, only growth in beneficial qualities and not decline is to be expected for him. This, too, is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu has aroused energy for abandoning harmful qualities and acquiring beneficial qualities. He is strong, firm in exertion, not casting off the duty of cultivating beneficial qualities. Having considered, this bhikkhu truly has aroused energy. Dot. Not casting off the duty of cultivating beneficial qualities, the elder bhikkhus, those of middle standing, and the junior bhikkhus think he should be corrected and instructed. Since they all have compassion for him, only growth in beneficial qualities and not decline is to be expected for him. This, too, is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu is content with any kind of robe, alms food, lodging, and medicines and provisions for the sick. Having considered, this bhikkhu truly is content with any kind of robe, alms food, lodging, and medicines and provisions for the sick, the elder bhikkhus, those of middle standing, and the junior bhikkhus think he should be corrected and instructed. Since they all have compassion for him, only growth in beneficial qualities and not decline is to be expected for him. This, too, is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu is mindful, possessing supreme mindfulness and alertness, one who remembers and recollects what was done and said long ago. Having considered, this bhikkhu truly is mindful, possessing supreme mindfulness and alertness. One who remembers and recollects what was done and said long ago, the elder bhikkhus, those of middle standing, and the junior bhikkhus think he should be corrected and instructed. Since they all have compassion for him, only growth in beneficial qualities and not decline is to be expected for him. This, too, 
is a quality that serves as a protector. Again, a bhikkhu is wise. He possesses the panna that discerns arising and passing away, which is noble and penetrative and leads to the complete destruction of suffering. Having considered, this bhikkhu truly is wise. He possesses the wisdom that discerns arising and passing away, which is noble and penetrative and leads to the complete destruction of suffering. The elder bhikkhus, those of middle standing, and the junior bhikkhus think he should be corrected and instructed. Since they all have compassion for him, only growth in beneficial qualities and RVOT decline is to be expected for him. This, too, is a quality that serves as a protector. Bhikkhus, live under a protector, not without a protector. One without a protector lives in suffering. These are the ten qualities that serve as a protector.